Hey guys! Today I'm going to be reviewing the final book in the Infernal Devices trilogy, Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. Are you Team Will or Team Jim? Warning, when you buy this book, whatever you do, do not take off the jacket of the book. If you are spoiler phobic, the inside of the jacket is full of spoilers, like who marries who and who dies. Something I like to do when I buy books is to immediately take off the jacket and see what's hidden underneath, because you never know what type of cool image or coloring might be underneath. And I made the mistake of doing just that. So when you do take off the jacket, what is underneath is this really cool detailed family tree of some of the major Shadowhunter families, and it ties in really good with the Moral Instrument series. The jacket is really cool, but like I said, if you're spoiler phobic, do not take the cover off. Look at the cover afterwards once you finish the book, and appreciate it that way. So on to a quick summary of what happens in Clockwork Princess. Picking up a few weeks after Clockwork Prince, Tessa Gray is preparing for her marriage to Jim Carstairs. But of course, nothing can go right in the life of Tessa Gray. Tessa continues to have a strange relationship with Will Herondale, and Will, in the meantime, is having these tormented feelings over his best friend's fiance. And in the meantime, the Magister is continuing his army of clockwork creatures, the Infernal Devices. Mortmain has a plan to snare Tessa in his trap, and the way he does this is by collecting all of the drug that manages to keep Jim alive, and he tells the Shadowhunters that he will return the drug if they give Tessa to him. Full of danger, magic, and the revelation of deep secrets, Clockwork Princess concludes with a heartbreaking and breathtaking end. I really feel like dropping to my knees and proclaiming dramatically, no, up into the air, because that's how I feel about this book. I was so devastated that it's over. I've been looking forward to this book for months and months and months, and so it's like, oh no. I'm not a big fan of young adult fiction, but The Infernal Devices is one of the very few that really gets to me. This book sends you on so many emotional paths, it's not even funny. So I guess I'll move on to the things I loved and hated about the book. I guess I'll start with the bad first. This book doesn't really get going until halfway through. And as you can tell, this is a very thick book. My edition is like over 500 pages. Now, I'm not saying the entire beginning was bad. There were quite a few things that I did really enjoy. But I kept thinking to myself, where's the good stuff? Where's the magister? How's the relationship between Will, Tessa, and Jim going to resolve? Simply put, I was anxious to get to the meatier parts of the story. The first half of the novel is really more about character development. We get to meet Cicely further, who is Will's sister, who was introduced shockingly at the end of Clockwork Prince. And we get to see her relationship with Will, and also another relationship with a certain somebody that I'm not going to spoil. I was hugely surprised with who she got hooked up with. We also get to see more of Gideon and Sophie and their relationship, and we get to see a lot of the antagonism that the Council has towards Charlotte. Charlotte is determined to keep and protect the Institute no matter the cost. Like I said, the first half of the novel is more heavily focused on developing character and all the relationships that everyone has with each other. Another issue I had with the book was Mortmain. Not so much Mortmain himself, but I guess how Cassandra Clare interpreted him throughout the book. Without spoiling the resolution of Mortmain, I will say that everything with him felt rather anticlimactic. He had such potential to turn out to be this great, fantastic villain. Ever since he was introduced in Clockwork Angel, I've been oddly fascinated with this character for some reason. Of course, in Clockwork Prince, that's where we got a lot of the deeper backstory involving Mortmain. So in Clockwork Princess, I was expecting that development to continue even further. And I was highly invested in seeing where his character was going to end up. But by the end, I kind of felt like Mortmain was kind of cliché in some ways, and I didn't really feel like he was that threatening of a villain. The infernal devices were much more menacing than him, and I wish it had been the other way around. 
Mortmain early on to me felt like a multi-dimensional character or he had the potential to be that but with Clockwork Princess I kind of feel like he reverted back to just some stereotypical villain which in the end wasn't that fascinating to even read about. As Clockwork Prince told us, Mortmain was seeking vengeance for the death of his mother and father who were killed by Shadowhunters. And I suppose that's what I didn't really like about Mortmain's story overall. I'm going to share a theory that I've had ever since Clockwork Angel that I guess Clockwork Prince ended up destroying, but I'll just go ahead and say it. I felt like Mortmain's trauma was going to have something to do with a woman he loved, and that's why he was so desperate to marry Tessa. Because after all, we know that Tessa can shapeshift, so I thought he was going to use Tessa as some sort of tool to shapeshift into the woman he loved so he could see that woman again and be with her forever. Thinking about it, okay, yes, that does sound kind of cliche, maybe a bit boring, but for me, that's what I was most interested in hearing and seeing on the page. Honestly, that's a plot I would have been more interested in and something I would have believed more rather than Mortmain's issues over his parents' death. So on to the love triangle. Wow. That's all I can even say. Whether you are Team Will or Team Jim, I don't think you're going to be disappointed either way. I think every reader will be pleased by the conclusion of the love triangle. Honestly, I was on both teams. I kind of really didn't have a preference. I'm not really that kind of reader that chooses sides like that, I, I suppose. Tessa, through all three books, had such a great relationship with both Jim and Will. I liked the sweet innocence between Tessa and Jim, but I also liked the sexual tension between Tessa and Will. And it's refreshing to read a story where everyone involved within the love triangle loves each other equally and passionately and are all willing to die for each other. Most people think of soulmates as only consisting of two people, but I think Cassandra Clare proves that soulmates don't just have to be two people. It's not just Tessa Jim or Tessa Will, it's Tessa Will and Jim together combined. I can't even say all I really want to say about the love triangle because everything I want to say is spoilers and I don't want to give the ending away. So I guess the one thing I can tell you is that you won't be disappointed. The love triangle is handled in such a way that it's both breathtaking and heartbreaking. One moment you're crying and then the next you're smiling. The resolution of the love triangle, in my opinion, is very unique. I do think Clockwork Princess is the weakest out of all three books in The Infernal Devices. There was a certain magic and appeal about the first two books that I particularly loved. I still really loved and enjoyed Clockwork Princess, but it was things like the first half of the novel and the conclusion of Mortmain that kind of distracted me. But the conclusion of the love triangle really makes up for all that. Overall, I think fans of The Infernal Devices will ultimately be pleased. It's seriously a very worthwhile conclusion compared to most trilogies. Some trilogies you can be either happy or totally angry at the end. But I think the end of Clockwork Princess is very satisfying. So that's my review for Clockwork Princess. I hope you all enjoyed and let me know if you've read the book yet. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share, all that good stuff. Bye guys!